guys, today I am filming the finale for my 365 days of sample series for 2019. And I am just going to be reviewing the products that I finished up this month. Anything that I had left, I'm gonna be rolling over into my 2020 sample project pan, which the intro will be coming soon. But in order to make this video a little bit more interesting, I decided that at the end, I was gonna go through and tell you guys all of my favorite samples of the year and the things I would actually consider purchasing. I don't think I have purchased anything because I'm not in a place where I need to, but out of all the things I tried, these are the things that I liked the most that I would consider purchasing in the future when I was in need of something. So we will just start by talking about the empties. And the first thing I finished would be the L'Oreal Alviv Color Vibrancy Repair and Protect Balm. It's finally all done and it actually only took me like a week and a half of this month to finish it. I love the scent of this. It did a really great job of deeply conditioning and hydrating my hair. It didn't weigh it down. It didn't make it greasy. I like this product a lot. However, I think that the other L'Oreal conditioner that I use, I love just as much and it's in a squeeze tube, which I prefer. So if this formula was in a squeeze tube, I would probably buy it. But because it's in the tub, I'm not gonna buy it. But if you are not bothered by that, the formula is great. So this goes along with one of my empties for December, but as you guys might be able to tell, I did dye my hair, thank the Lord, but you can tell I might, my hair grows fast, because here I am already with a little bit of root, which is annoying. I dyed my hair probably like three weeks ago. But anyway, after I finished up the L'Oreal hair mask, I started using the conditioner that came with my hair dye kit. And again, like I said, I'll talk about that in a minute, but this is the Clairol Nice and Easy CC Plus Color Seal Conditioner. I love the scent of this. It does a great, great job of deeply hydrating my hair. I love the conditioners that come with hair dye kits, and I wish that they would sell these individually, but in a full size. I know some brands do, but in these little minis, which is like a, like a shot of conditioner, which is gonna be a little overpriced for me, but this is a great product, and I love that Clairol and a couple other brands, instead of doing a foil sample, they put it in like an actual like resealable container, which I greatly appreciate. So I do love this product a lot. And then we've got skincare products. So this is something I forgot to show you guys last month. And this is the Clinique Take the Day Off Makeup Remover for Lids, Lashes, and Lips. I do rotate through different and as soon as I'm saying that, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm realizing I already filmed my intro for next year. I forgot to put the makeup remover in there too. It's because I don't store it with the rest of my products. I just keep forgetting the makeup remover because this is something that I use to remove swatches because I have other products I prefer to actually remove my makeup. So that's why I forget it. But anyway, I was right here last month and now it is completely used up and I have very consistent progress there, but again, this is something I just use to remove swatches, and this did do a pretty nice job of that. I just don't love liquid makeup remover on my face because then I'm gonna run through like a million cotton pads because I wear a lot of makeup, and it's just easier for me to just use one makeup remover wipe, but this is a good formula of makeup remover. I just don't love that it's liquid. Then I have the Dermalogica Special Cleansing Gel. This was very basic. It did not do anything for me, so it's not something I would repurchase. And the next product I actually used in just one month, which is crazy, this is the Shea Moisture African Black Soap Clarifying Facial Wash and Scrub with Tamarind Extract and Tea Tree Oil for Blemish Prone Skin, and it has 1.5 ounces in it. You guys know it takes me forever to use that product, uh, especially something of this size, but I went through it quickly because I did not like this. So I don't like the scent first off. I think it's gross and I just don't like the consistency of this. It is a really creamy texture, which means it's not that exfoliated. And the exfoliating bits in here are pretty large. So again, they, they also didn't exfoliate because of like the cream that it was mixed with, but also because of the particles themselves. So I ended up using this on my face and my body to get it used up because again, I did not like the scent and I didn't feel like it did anything for me, but I had used too much of it to pass it on. So I would not recommend or repurchase that. I finished both of my serums for the day. I was using the Ole Henriksen 
truth serum and I was right there at the last update. I do really enjoy this product. I don't know if I would purchase it in the full size. I don't know if I'm convinced by vitamin C serums, but it's something that I will continue to use up if I get them in little minis. It's a nice product. And then I used up the Caudalie Vino Perfect Radiant Serum. I did not like the scent of this. It didn't do a thing for my skin. I do have another of these and I'm going to be passing it on. I don't even want to take the time to use it up. Then for moisturizer, I had a whole bunch of foil samples. And out of all of them, the only one that I actually liked is the Origins Ginseng Energy Boosting Moisturizer for the daytime. I thought that this was nice. I would use up some minis of that, but again, probably not something I would repurchase. The rest of these, I didn't really care for at all. The Origins High Potency Nitamins Mineral and Rich Renewal Cream. It's just a little heavier. The Tarte Drink of H2O Hydrating Boost. It just didn't do a thing for me. The Too Cool for School... 5-in-1 Egg Mellow Cream Firming Moisturizer. I did not like the smell of this. It don't smell like eggs, but the smell of this is gross, so I would not purchase it because of that. The Bosha Cactus Water Moisturizer feels a little bit like a jelly, like the Clinique Hydrating Jelly, which I, I cannot stand that texture of, so no thank you. And then this one I do like. This is the Sunday Riley Tidal Brightening Enzyme Water Cream. I do like this a lot, but it is very pricey, and I... If I'm going to spend that much on a moisturizer, I would rather buy the Belief True Cream Aqua Balm. And I also like the Tatcha Water Cream more than this one, but it's not a bad product. And the last two samples I used up would be perfume samples. This first one is YSL Black Opium. It's in a very weird container. It's not in a spray like this one. I'm not sure if I opened it incorrectly, but there didn't look like a place to tear it off or like pull it out or break it off or anything like that. So I just cut off the top and poured it out, which was so dumb because then I had to be afraid not to knock it over. And I love this scent. I do have a one ounce bottle of it and it's a great go-to for me for the winter time. And then I did use a Princess by Killian. I do like the scent, not enough to get a rollerball or a full size, but if I get any more samples, I will use them up. I've tried Adults and Princess by Killian and I think both of them smell great, but this perfume line, the bottle looks like an award from an award show. It's so nice, but these are so crazy expensive. I, like, even if I love the perfume, I could just never buy it. So, good perfumes, but not a must-have for me. Then there are just three other products that I have for December empties. The first one, of course, is some Neutrogena Makeup from River Wipes, like I tell you guys. They are my favorite because with just one wipe, I can remove all my face makeup and my eye makeup, and they do not burn my eyes or my skin, which is great. And I just get the big pack of them from Costco. Then for my hair dye, I actually had gotten this free from Pinch Me Box a little while ago. This is the Clear All Nice and Easy in the shade 9G light golden blonde and as you can tell it's not exactly the color that I have but I know that. I like buying golden blonde hair dyes because I do have redheads in my family so when I use something golden my hair ends up being more of like a strawberry blonde which is what I want. If I use something more strawberry blonde it will end up looking a little bit too red so that is why I go with golden blondes but this was a really nice hair dye formula. My mom actually always dyes my hair and we both like this one because the texture was a lot thicker it was more like conditioner so it was very easy to work through the hair also the scent of this one was not bad compared to others that can just like smell like it's burning your your eyes and like seeping into your scalp this one like smelled like hair dye but not as strong so it was a really good product i i really do recommend it and enjoy it and and it could be because of the colors that I'm using, but I find that with these hair dyes, my hair does not really fade. It just grows out. So I do like this color a lot, and I definitely do think it would be something I would repurchase. I have preferred a Garnier hair dye in the past, but I know they don't sell it at Ulta anymore. So I'll have to look, see if they discontinued it or not. If they do, I will buy it this one I believe but I do like that Garnier color a little bit better but the formula is very similar so that is something I would recommend if you're looking for a box hair dye and 
The last thing I have would be the Quaked Beauty 100% Acetone Nail Polish Remover. I mentioned to you guys before, I like to buy this size of bottle, which is a six fluid ounce, because it perfectly fits in this little CVS twist and lock pump bottle. And I love that because in the past, I've knocked over my polish remover so many times. So I prefer using that because I just stick a little cotton ball on the top and pump up the product. But I do use acetone. I know that is very strong on your nails. It's very stripping, but I just want to make sure I'm removing all of my polish. And it does a really good job. And this is like a dollar from Walmart. So I definitely do recommend this one and I do enjoy it. And it is the perfect size for me. So those are my thoughts on all the things that I finished in December. And now we are gonna get into these sample products I would repurchase. And there are some of these things where I don't have like the most in-depth, freshest review for you because I haven't used them in a while. So I will have my playlist linked up in the card so you can check back at my previous updates to actually hear my thoughts on the product. So I'm gonna try to run through them and not go too, too in-depth. If you guys have seen my updates you know like most of the time I'm like didn't do anything for me wouldn't repurchase it it was okay wouldn't repurchase it so for the fact that I actually have a decent amount of products here show that for how picky I am these at least to me must be real good so for hair care products there's actually five things which we both know is crazy because I never give a hoot about hair stuff but there are actually three shampoo and conditioners that I really loved for different reasons and I just finished testing these last month I believe so the first would be two different lines from the one by Frederick Fakai the uplifting one volume shampoo conditioner and the brilliant one for color treated hair and both of these actually perform very similarly for me I use a purple shampoo all the time for my hair and I don't like I don't have brassy tones but I don't feel like it makes my more warm tone hair look cool either but Anyway, I do think the formula of these were nice. They did cleanse my hair. They didn't make it feel too greasy. But the reason I really love these is because the scent was intoxicating. It was so nice. It smelled just like the salon and it lasted a long time in my hair. I mentioned before, I'm someone where scents just don't stay on my hair, my body. So for the fact that I could smell that, like later in the day, next day, was amazing. I absolutely loved the smell of that. And the formula was good too, but the smell really blew me away. And the other shampoo and conditioner was the Bosley Revive Nourish and Volume Shampoo and Conditioner for color treated hair. And again, this did make my hair feel very cleansed. It didn't weigh it down or make it too greasy. But the reason I really love this is because the Bosley line is supposed to like promote hair growth or regrowth. And this shampoo I could tell was like really stimulating my scalp. I don't know if it made me have any more hair in my hair grow, but the way it was like stimulating my scalp felt amazing and really cool, especially for like just a shampoo. So I really like that. I do have a couple more samples of like the same Bosley one and then a different kind from them. So I'll definitely test those out next year and see if it's just this specific one or if they all do that. But that was really cool and it made me interested and would love to get at least in like travel sizes to see what I think of it, but it was a really, really cool. Then there were two leave-in hair products that I really enjoyed. The Purology Color Fanatic Multitasking Hair Beautifier. The scent of this one is just okay, but the more I used it, the more I liked it. And for me, with most leave-in hair products, I feel like they're all the same. But after I finished using this Purology one, I went to this separate one that's a little bit more natural and it did nothing for my hair. And I realized when I was using this Purology, my hair was a lot smoother and a lot softer. So I would absolutely consider purchasing this. And if I get any more minis, which I think I have another one, I will hold on to it. And then the other hair products is a similar thing. It's the It's a Tin Miracle Leave-In Treatment. I am just using the original one, but I do have the one with keratin and I do have the one for blondes. I've been lucky enough to get a lot of freebie mini sizes of these, which I will use up. I'm using one right now. Again, out of all the different hair treatments I've purchased, I love the It's a 10 ones because they smell great. They don't weigh down my hair. And again, they do make it feel soft and smell nice. So those are the two leave-in hair products that I would consider purchasing. So moving on to skincare, which would be my largest category. The first thing that I would purchase would be the Clinique Take the Day Off Cleansing Balm. And I actually have because this was part of the last Ulta 21 Days of Beauty. Um, this is a product when I tried it at first, I just was 
not getting the hype and that's because it's really like one of the first times I've ever used like a solid cleansing balm but the more I used it the more I liked it I do feel like it really easily breaks down on my face and eye makeup and I usually will do this at the sink and then get in the shower and wash my face and I think it does a great job it removes the makeup really easy but the balm itself is easy to remove from my face which is important to me I don't want to sit there and be like rubbing and rubbing and rubbing to get it all off so I do really like that product then there were a couple cleansers I was impressed by. And for me, most of the time, cleansers are very basic and there's no need to buy something high end because you have it on your face for 40 seconds and then you wash it down the drain. But these two products I did really like. One's high end and one is drugstore. So the high end one is a Glam Glow Super Cleanse Cream to Foam Cleanser. It did feel very cleansing on the skin. There are some where like I can tell I wash my face, but then I really like the cleansers that feel refreshing afterwards. That's what makes me feel truly clean. And that's how this one felt. And I did recently get another mini of this, which I will be very excited to try out. Glam Glow product, Glam Glow products are way too expensive for me. I think sometimes people have found this at TJ Maxx. I mean, it's something that I would consider purchasing because I really was impressed with the formula, but Glam Glow is really just too expensive of a brand. But this next one, I loved. And like I said, it was drugstore. But I don't know if this is around anymore. The drugstore discontinues products so quickly. Like hair, skin, and makeup products. They discontinue so freaking quickly. So I'll have to see. This is the L'Oreal Pure Clay Cleanser. And there were a couple different versions. This one was the Detox and Brighten Clay to Mousse. Again, it was a really interesting consistency, but my face felt very clean and it felt very refreshed. So those were my favorite two cleansers of the year. Then for serums, I have two. And the first one was the Ole Henriksen True Serum. I've used up several of these. Like I said, it's a product I do enjoy because sometimes other vitamin C products can feel a little too sticky for me. That one doesn't and the scent is not overwhelming. It's a product I do like. I just am still like not sure if I really see the effects of serums, but out of the serums I've tried this year, that one is one of my favorites. And the other one would be the Clarins Pore Control Serum. And that's one I think I would really consider purchasing because that is something really targeted towards my skin type, which is oily and acne prone. And I love the consistency of this. It's more of like, a balmy serum that absorbs into the skin nicely. It feels very smoothing. It had a really good scent. So I did really enjoy that product. And then I had several moisturizers. The first one I had tried just from a foil sample. This is the Bliss Drench and Quench Cream to Water Hydrator. And it was a really great product that I would consider a good daytime moisturizer. It is that cream to water. So it's kind of more of like a gel consistency on the skin that absorbs quickly, gives my oily skin the perfect amount of moisture and I did actually purchase this one it was part of the last Ulta skin event I haven't used it yet with all of my mini skincare products it's very hard for me to use my full-size products which is why I don't buy them that often because I gotta make a choice here and I was really impressed with that and again it's not drugstore but it is affordable then another product that I think is amazing is the Garnier Skin Active Moisture Balm. And I believe this to be a dupe of the Belief True Cream Aqua Balm. So I know the Garnier one is called Moisture, but it is a gel consistency that is a really good moisturizer for oily skin. And then the other one I love was, of course, the original Belief True Cream Aqua Balm, my perfect daytime moisturizer. And then I do love the Moisture Balm for night. I'm not very picky at nighttime. I like something that's a little bit heavier and more hydrating because I'm sleeping in it and I want it to absorb in my skin. So I'm not the pickiest about it, but this one I do really like. It doesn't feel too gross and heavy on my skin, but it gives me like a good amount of moisture. And then the last one I really liked is the Tatcha Water Cream. And this is a really good moisturizer. I do have another little mini of this. I think this is a good moisturizer for oily skin as well. Probably like combo oily. If you're super dry, it's not gonna hydrate you enough, but if you're somewhere between normal to oily, I do think that you would like this. I like the Believe a little bit more, but the Tatcha is really good as well. And I'm not sure what the price difference is between the two because I know they're both really expensive. But now I'm so excited because Belief is being sold at Ulta, which is incredible. And now I probably will bite the bullet and buy something from Belief. And then I've got 
two eye creams that I really loved. The Origins Ginseng Refreshing Eye Cream is one that I've loved for a long time. I've had little mini samples, I've had foil samples of it, and I do think it's a good product. There are a few other eye creams that I like just a little bit more, but this is one that does go on sale from time to time. It is part of the Ulta Skin event this year, and I thought about buying it, because I don't really have any full size eye creams, but I still have several deluxe size eye creams that take me forever to go through. So I'm not gonna buy it this time, but maybe next year I will, depend on where I'm at with my eye cream stash. And then the other one, which is one that I love a little bit more, which sucks, is the Drunk Elephant Sea Tango eye cream. And I've tried several Drunk Elephant products and none of the other ones would I actually consider repurchasing. Now I haven't tried like the, um, the serums that are in the orange top and the pink top, which I think are some of people's like products that they feel actually made an improvement in their skin. I've really tried like the hydrating serum and their moisturizers before and they were just like fine for me. But um, I really love this eye cream. It is a nice lightweight consistency, so it absorbs quickly. It makes my under eyes feel very smooth, but nice and hydrated. So I love this product and I'm very happy that I do have several minis right now. They were available for 100 point perks a couple months back. I got two, my friend Jean got two and she didn't end up liking it because she she has discovered vitamin C does not work for her skin. So she sent them to me. So I'm very excited to have all of those to work through. And by the time I get through those, I'll really be able to decide if it's something that I think would be worth buying in a full size. And I hate that because it's so expensive. But again, it's a really, really nice eye cream. So. Those two plus the Caudalie Resveratrol Lift Eye Lifting Balm are my favorite eye creams that I've tried. And I have one more skincare product that I actually really loved and it was a mask, which you guys know I'm not a mask person. It takes me forever to get through them. But my favorite mask that I've tried has been the Glam Glow Thirsty Mud Hydrating Treatment Mask. And again, like I said, I think Glam Glow is way overpriced. But this is something that's really good. It is a great moisture mask. After I wash this off my skin, I do feel incredibly hydrated. It doesn't feel like sticky afterwards, but it's more than just a regular moisturizer. It is really a nice product. And if you do have really dry skin, I would recommend it. I really enjoyed it as well. But again, I can't justify the price of it necessarily but if it came up at TJ Maxx for a good price I would consider it because it's really good and the last four things I have would be some perfumes that I really loved and I'm very picky about perfumes I get them all the times in orders because I want to try them out but I have got a sandwich bag of like 50 perfume samples that I'm gonna be sending my friend Jean because I'm that picky and these four here made the cut and are things that I would either like to get in a full size or at least like a rollerball size so I could further develop my feelings for these. And the first one is the Guerlain Mont Guerlain perfume. I had so many little samples of this one and I do currently have a scent bird size. And really that was the perfect way for me to decide this year that like I'm finally ready for this scent and I feel like I've tested enough where I'm like, yes, I do want to buy this in the full size. A 3.4 ounce bottle is not necessary for me. A one, 1 1.7 ounce, I'm good. So perfume is very expensive and I'm thinking that probably like Christmas of 2020, I'm gonna get some more perfumes because I'm good for now and I wanna work through some of what I've got, but I love that scent. It's a really nice deep winter scent. I will have the notes for all these perfumes listed in the description box. And this next one is something that I'm still on the fence about a little bit, Dior Joy. I think this smells great, but part of it is a little sweet and part of it has like a tinge of a grandma scent to it and not a lot, but just a little bit, which has, has held me back from buying it. So if I did, I would just get a one ounce size. But right now I have a Dixie cup with like six samples of this perfume and I'm trying to work through a perfume right now, but afterwards I'm just gonna use all of those Dior Joys, probably like back to back, because that's what really helped me with Guerlain, Mon Guerlain was using a bunch of them in a row. And I think if I do that, I can decide whether I want to buy it or not, but I'm thinking I do. Like, I was like, no, I don't want it. Like, yes, I do. No, I don't. Yes, I do. So I'm a little conflicted. So 
We'll see where I get with that, but I do like it and it's they don't make it in a rollerball size. If they did, I would buy it. And unfortunately, Scentbird or any of those like perfume subscription services don't currently have that fragrance because it is so new. So that is a shame because I would that would be a perfect size. And the last two perfumes were things I tried towards the end of the year and really fell in love with. And the first one I've been able to get a couple little samples of. It is Dolce & Gabbana, the only one. And they have something called The One and then they have The Only One, which is a little bit newer. And fortunately they do sell this in a rollerball size, which is what I think I would buy first because I find this to be very similar to YSL Black Opium and I already have that. So I don't think I need both of them in the full size, but I want to get the travel size of this or the rollerball size so I can decide if they're different enough to really have them both. And I don't know why, but on me, YSL Black Opium has a little bit of a weed tone to it. I don't know why, but literally I wore it to work one day and my boss came in and said, oh my gosh, someone smells like weed. And it was me. I knew it was me, but I, I didn't make that connection until he said that. And I was like, oh my gosh, that is absolutely my perfume, which is a little crazy. So the Dolce & Gabbana smells like black opium minus the weed undertone, and it's a little bit sweeter. So I like that because why is that black opium is like as deep of a scent as I can go. I like very deep woodsy scents, but for a home fragrance, I don't like them on my body. I find them to be a little too overwhelming, but that one is like my max deep, sexy woodsy scent. So Dolce & Gabbana is just a little bit lighter, a little bit fresher, a little sweeter. So I would love to get a rollerball size of that one. And the last one is the Clean Reserve Solar Bloom Perfume. And I only tried one little sample of it, but they also do sell this in a rollerball size. So I do want to pick that up sometime this year. And this is like a nice, sexy fall scent, but it's a little bit lighter. So it's good for the daytime, which is great because a lot of my other fall scents I find to be a little strong for every day. This one is perfect. And I honestly, I'm not remembering the notes right now. I'm not remembering like exactly what I felt about it, except I was like, dang, this is good. I want this. So those are the four perfumes I would like to buy either in like a rollerball size or a full size. I love them that much. And again, I'm very picky about perfumes and I have a pretty small collection. So I was surprised that there were that many. But guys, I hope that was helpful. Like I said, I know I didn't have the most details because these are not fresh in my mind. Some of these I haven't used in a while, but I'm really happy to see that there were that many products that I loved that much that I would consider repurchasing them. And I definitely want to do this next year as well. Do like a finale and then my favorite samples of the year. So I would love to know what your favorite samples were this year and what your thoughts are on the products I mentioned today, either the things I finished or the things that I mentioned that I would repurchase. I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye, guys.